Welcome back to our final segment of The Honest Media. Now, we're going to close out with a story that gives me hope. Gives me hope for American-Russian relations so we can end this second Cold War that Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama have created. Yeah. Because you can't blame Bush for this one. Him and Putin were homies. Yeah. But this is from... Pooty Putin, that's what they call them. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they were friends. Yeah, they, they were. They were always buddying uh-huh. around. It, and, you know, America is better with friends than enemies. That's true, yeah. I think anybody could say that. Now, you want to have the right friends. Yeah. You don't want to just make friends with anybody. Yeah. But Putin helps us in our fight against ISIS. Putin helps us in our fights yeah. in the Middle East. So why are we wanting war They've with They've secretly been helping us for years with ISIS That's from right. a thing I read the other day. Yeah. I believe. Well, you know. and, and but Intel now, gathering and everything else. But... Obama and Hillary think that America needs to expand its sphere of influence to include Syria, which is by and large one of Putin's only little members of his sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. But this is fascinating. This is from Politico. Why this Russian wants to give Donald Trump 100,000 rubles. I'm not going to try to bastardize his name, but Felix Kolksky knows war. His grandfather had five sons, and only one came back from World War II. Kolsky's father was one of the ones who didn't make it home, and Felix was born in his absence, shortly after he went off to the front in 1941. My generation never recovered, he says, of the 20 million people the Soviet Union lost in the fight, so there is just no way we want another war. And so, to help Russia avoid another catastrophic conflict, he decided to do something about it. He wrote to Donald Trump. How (laughs) cool is this story? Dear Mr. Donald Trump, he wrote, Greetings from the most ordinary Russian citizen, Felix Nikolaevich Kuksky. From his home in his blighted industrial city on Eastern Europe, on the Eastern Europe slope of the Ural Mountains, Kuksky says he has been following the U.S. presidential election and has concluded one thing. From the group of candidates for the presidency, you are the only one who inspires confidence, he wrote to Trump. When you, fathered, when you followed your father's footsteps into the construction business, you were very successful. You increased your family's wealth many, many times over. Kolsky sees Trump in an American everyman. Mm-hmm. Your work in this field creates a convincing image. A laborer who's re- in, into whose reliable hands we can trust the fate of the American people and country. I mean, that, this guy gets it, a Russian guy, doesn't yeah. he? Probably because he doesn't have access to the mainstream media. Yeah. Because he can't just turn on the news and see Trump hit peace after He Trump just summed peace. it up perfectly. He did. Yeah. He did. But again, Kolsky is really a one-issue voter. Were he able to vote in the American elections at all? He doesn't want war with America. And Trump doesn't seem to want to go to war with Russia. You mm. are the only candidate for president who doesn't use rhetoric about the military threat from Russia. Kolsky wrote, possessing superior military potential and the most developed economy in the world, you are always able to resolve the most pressing problems peacefully. Your phrase from the March 22nd, 2016, it is much better to build relationships with all governments, but it's always better to get along with them. If we get along with Russia, that would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Well, and I don't know if you remember the GOP debates when you had Jeb, you had Carly, you had Kasich, you had mm-hmm. Cruz, you had all of them saying no fly zone over Syria. Yeah, they're trying to start war with Russia. They, they were want, they were daring, daring them to fly in there. It was like, watch what we'll do. Well, they were already yeah. there. That's the thing. That's yeah. what infuriated me watching the debates. Yeah. Russia's Air Force at the time, I think they've stopped because Syria's got it a little bit more under control. Yeah. Russia's Air Force was in Russia, yeah. I mean in Syria, yeah. doing raids against ISIS, being extremely successful, extremely surgical. Yeah. And the moron Republicans all get up there and say, no fly zone over Syria. Mm-hmm. So how are you going to remove Russian jets from the airspace they are already occupying? Yeah, they were threatening they were going to shoot their jets down yeah. if they flew in the thing. Yeah. Trying to start World War Three, basically. You're absolutely right. And we'll, we'll just we'll keep reading here. Russia and America haven't been getting along for a while now. Ever since President Barack Obama's reset fizzled and Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, relations between the two countries have sunk to what pundits like to call Cold War lows. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, unexpectedly, this election has presented the Kremlin and the Russians with a champion. 
Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. A man who openly says he will he would get along with Putin, who would build a relationship with him and with Russia, and would pull America off the world stage where it keeps getting tangled in Russia's feet. And I don't think these guys these guys quite get it because we're in what two hundred sixty countries. Is that right? We're in like every country there is yeah. has to be our ally. And not just our ally. We have to have a United States military base there that we pay for. Mm-hmm. And we have to station our men and women in their countries. Yeah. Now, like Trump says, it's one thing if they're going to pay us. Yeah. If they're going to cover the cost of Americans being yeah. there and Americans risking their lives. Mm-hmm. But why do we have to be the policemen of the world? Why do we, and not just the policemen, we're like the, the, the fewers of the world. Yeah. What we say goes. It's and the empire. It's the empire. That's right. Empire. Why can't we give Ru- Russia a couple little states? Why can't we let them have a say on the geopolitical stage? I mean, mm-hmm. you, you can't point. You can point at one thing Russia has done that's maybe not so good. And there's much worse stuff being done in the world. You can say their legislation about uh, no gay propaganda, as they call it, which is, from what I understand, just people uh, uh, be supporting homosexuality in public. You mm-hmm. can sit there and you can say, okay, that's one bad thing Russia's done. Yeah. One bad thing. Mm-hmm. We're going to hold that against them. We're going to use that as the mm-hmm. issue that creates the new Cold War, that creates World War Three. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Just these war mongers and war profiteers that own all these other politicians. That's right. Tell them to go out there and save the rattles so they can start stuff up again. That's right. Mm-hmm. And with Russia, I mean, maybe it's because I'm advantaged. You know, as a young man, I didn't live in the Cold War. I've lived with radical Islamic terror almost my entire life, but yeah. I got to miss the Cold War. Mm-hmm. And so well, I'm sitting here thinking, why does Russia have to be our enemy? Why do we want Cold War 2.0? Whatever yeah. happened to peace p- peace in our time? Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous. that would be nice. It sure would be. Trump's warm comments about Putin have horrified American foreign policy stalwarts, or as you call them, aptly, the saber rattlers, mm-hmm. and become an issue on the campaign trail. Trump has praised Putin. Putin responded by calling him talented and colorful and brilliant. First of all, they're getting it backwards. First, Putin said, Trump is a brilliant man. I Mm -hmm. think he's clearly the leader of the GOP race at this time. And then Trump responded, well, I like that Putin called me brilliant. Everybody wants me to say, how dare he call me brilliant. Well, I like if anybody calls me brilliant, which frankly, I agree. (laughs) The guy's giving an extremely... Well, yeah, he was supposed compliment. to. He was supposed to bash him for. Yeah, for uh, Putin his may think I'm brilliant, yeah. but I think he's an idiot. Well, yeah, you know, obviously he's not an idiot. I think we're way better off having Russia as a friend I think than uh, than not. And not. And at, I don't know why Russia has to be the boogeyman either. I don't yeah. Know, because I guess but, maybe... But, well, we always need a boogeyman, don't we? Uh, but, you know, we have a boogeyman. Yeah. It's called radicalism. Yeah. And it's a real boogeyman. It's not a government-created boogeyman. Yeah. No, I, I just, I don't understand it. Maniacs. That's about right. Mm-hmm. Maniacs. Yep. Well, I think we're about all we can do for this week. This has been The Honest Media. I'm Tom Pappert. I'm Craig Chrysler. We'll be back next week. <laughs>